Hello guys, this is Deepika from MyTutorialRack.com. In this tutorial, we are going to create a property management application. And this property management application will integrate with a third party system called Authorize.net. And this Authorize.net is a service provider which is used to accept payments like credit card payments or check payments, etc. So it authorizes our payments. So we're going to go ahead and use a test environment for the authorize.net and we're going to integrate that environment with our Salesforce. So in this property management application, we are going to create a custom object called rental units. And this rental unit will store the information related to all the rental apartments that are available for rent. So in any apartment building, if there is an apartment which is available for rent, this object will be used to give information related to that apartment unit. So let's say we are going to create a new rental unit. Rental unit name is Tucker Hill. This is the Tucker Hill Apartments. This is the name of the rental unit and the apartment number 131 is available for rent and it has two bedrooms and uh, one bathroom floor it's a single story G garage is attached number of parking spaces let's say we have two available laundry is in community you do not have any hookups appliances included yes furniture is not included it's a 1200 square footage air conditioning is available central heating is also available so this is the information related to the rental unit now once the rental unit is available for the rent they're going to advertise and stuff right and let's say we have a customer who came in and who wants to rent this unit he's interested in renting out this unit what we're going to do is as a manager of this rental apartments what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an agreement between the renter and the unit that he's going to rent so we are going to create another custom object which is called the rental agreement. And this custom object would be used to see what is the amount that the customer is going to pay for the unit, uh, if there is a deposit made by him, if, if he is going to be keeping any pets and stuff like that. So this is another custom object that we are going to build as part of our property management application. So here, let's say the renter name who is going to rent is Pete Martin. This is the name of the renter. The renter information will be stored in our existing object, which is the existing standard object called contacts. So this contacts is going to store the information related to the renters. So his address, phone number, stuff like that, all that information we are going to store in this contact object. And let's say the name of the agreement is Pete Tucker Hill agreement and you can even say starting December 2018. So this is going to be the agreement name and deposit. He has a pet. So he has to pay a hundred dollar deposit, pet deposit. He has a pet and he hasn't paid any other deposit, but the rental amount every month rent that we're going to collect would be 1500. Let's say. So this rental agreement will give indication about what will be the rent that the renter has to pay every month. So this is the rental agreement we have created between the renter and the apartment unit. So now what will happen is as in management of this apartment complex, I'm going to issue billing statements so that the renter has to pay the amount that is due for that month's rent, right? So in order to do that, we are going to create a statement object this is going to be another custom object that we are going to create and this custom object is going to tell that hey you, this renter has to pay current month's rent by this date so this is going to be the object that we're going to create and it is going to be equals to the amount would be it can be more or less than the rental amount so the p tucker rental agreement was fifteen hundred dollars every month right so i'm going to issue in statement and as the manager of this apartment complex i'm going to issue in statement for whom for this pete additional fee he does not have to pay anything else and the due date would be let's say he has to pay this is for the november rent right so he has to pay by December 19th and we have issued the statement. Okay, so this is going to be the another custom object that we're going to build. Now, what will happen is 
by this due date, Pete Martin has to pay the rental amount, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to have a payment section available in which he can come and he can log into Salesforce and pay his monthly payment. So how he's going to do, he's going to come here under the statement. So whatever the statement is, so what rental units we have, this is going to be the information related to the apartment that is available for the rent. Rental agreement is whatever the agreement you have made with the renter. And with that rental agreement, you have issued the statement that this person has to pay $1,500. So you have issued the statement. Now what will happen is it is a responsibility of the renter to come and pay in time. Okay. And we have given him three options. He can pay by cash, he can pay by check, or he can pay by credit card. If he's willing to pay by check, then he has to provide the check account number and the routing number. If he's going to pay by credit card, then he has to give the credit card number, expiration date, and the security code. Now, important thing here is you cannot just use a random credit card number. No, it has to be a valid credit card number. You don't have to go ahead and actually use your own credit card. What I'm going to use here is we're going to use a test credit card numbers. If you Google any website, you have different services that are available who helps you in generating these credit card numbers. So we, what we're going to do here is we are going to use these credit card numbers like Visa, MasterCard, etc. But if you try to use a wrong credit card number, this authorized.net will tell you that, hey, this is wrong. So you have to use a valid credit card number. It can be a test one, but it has to be a valid one. You cannot just use any random number. So this authorized.net is going to be responsible for accepting payments, which the renters are going to make. So now what will happen is this Pete Martin comes and uh, he is going to provide information, right? So the Texas is the billing state credit card number has to be one of these. So we're going to go ahead and provide a credit card number, credit card expiration. You can pick any 2020, let's say security code is one, one, one and hit the save payment. So what will happen now is it's going to go ahead and make a call external or will make a call out to this authorized.net. And if you go to the transaction history here, so you can see here, once you come to this authorized.net, you will see there is a payment made by Martin Pete via a credit card. And this is the number he used. So if you remember, this is the number ending in 2592. This is the payment method he used and the amount that he paid is $1,500. So since we used a right credit card number, that payment became successful. So now what will happen is if you refresh this page, now whatever the payments this Pete has made, Martin Pete, Pete Martin has made, it will be collected under this payment object. Now this payment object will also have the information related to the response that is coming from authorized.net. So we are going to send the request with all our credit card information to this third party system. And now the third party is going to come back with a response that hey, we authorized, we looked at the credit card, it's a valid credit card, etc. So this is the response that came from the authorized.net. So you can see here, this is the transaction ID 6011240. And this is the transaction ID which matches this number. So it gives you the transaction ID, it gives you the authorization code, and it gives you the response. Now this response is not generated by Salesforce. This response came from authorized.net. Okay, so this is the third party system we're going to integrate. And how we're going to integrate, we will take, take a look at it from the next tutorial, but this is just to give you an overview of what we are going to build in this course. So this is the response that came back, credit card expiration year, security code, etc. So this is the property management application that we're going to build. Now, if somebody tries to use or give a random credit card number, let's see what happens. If let's say I'm coming here, and for the same apartment, for the same agreement, because Pete is going to be leasing this apartment for about a year, right? So this, he made a payment of November, let's say. This is the payment we made for November. Now he needs to pay a payment for December, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to issue another statement as the rental manager. I'm going to go ahead and issue a statement for Pete Martin that he has to pay the next month rent and it is going to be due by January 9th. So we're going to go ahead and for the same amount, 1500 and no additional fees, start date, we are going to make sure that this is the payment he has to make for 
December 31st statement date is and the due date would be the January the 9th. Okay, so 2019, he has to go ahead and make the payment by the 9th. So we are giving him one week to make the payment and no additional fee status is issued. As a manager of this rental complex, I'm going to go ahead and issue a statement which is going to remind my renter that he has to make the payment. So now if he comes to Salesforce and he's going to go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to make my payment by a credit card and amount is this much and then billing state is Texas credit card number. If you try to use a wrong credit card number, what will happen? Let's say I'm trying to use your credit card number, which is invalid, but I'm, it's a 16 digit and uh, but it's a wrong one so august of 21 security code is 222 and now if i try to hit the payment what is going to happen is it's going to say invalid it's wrong because this credit card number that you used is a wrong credit card number means it's invalid so that's why the payment was did not went through so this is a responsibility of authorize.net to go ahead and see if somebody is using the right credit card number, authorize them if they make the right payment or if they use the correct credit card numbers. So anytime the payment is made, we will also going to send an email to the contact, to the renter saying that the payment has been received. The payment has been made for $1,500. This is the amount, $2,592. This is the transaction ID. So this is for the recording purpose that this person has made, made the payment on time and this is the receipt. So all this we are going to do in our property management application. So we are going to create some standard objects, we are going to utilize some standard objects, we are going to create some custom objects, we are going to write our Apex code, we will create our Visual Force pages, we will integrate our Salesforce with Authorize.net and how do we do all that? We're going to learn about that in this course. So this is the property management application that we are going to build in this course. From the next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and start working on our property management application from scratch. So I will see you then. Thank you so much.